Uh, well, my name is Mitch de Klein. Uh, you might know me from my release on Filth and Acid, label of Rainier Zonneveld, and my release on Elevate from Pick and Dan. Um, I recently got more into the melodic kind of techno, and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to explain to you how I create a melodic techno track. I will begin with uh, how I start a track, just like jamming around with, uh, with some hardware synth. I just recently bought a Moog. And I will explain what choices I make. And um, at the end, I will try to lay it down quickly, an arrangement. And after that, I will show some tips and tricks on how you can make your track sound inter interesting and more unique. So that's what I'm going to do today. So let's get right ahead. I have a melody right here. Is the volume good? Louder? So this melody came in my head and I, I put it down and I recorded it. And when I started track, I instantly put effects on it because I want um, to hear how it sounds when, when it's like the final, uh, final sound. I, I would like to uh, know how it sounds uh, yeah, when the track is finished right away. So I'll put some effects on this lead already. The reverb gives us more depth already. I'll always put a small delay on it. And with a reverb, I use the Karma FX reverb. It's a free plugin, you can download it at the website. And uh, a cool trick to actually hear what the reverb is doing is to take off the dry. And you hear exactly what, what frequencies uh, the reverb is playing. There's an EQ to uh, boost the mid and high frequencies to lower the low frequencies. And this is a, a, a low cut. Then I always use, a, not always, but I often use a transient master. And what it does is it just had two knobs, attack and sustain, and you can make a sound sound a little longer than it actually is. I don't know if you can hear it too well on these speakers. I think you can hear the difference pretty well, right? And then here I have a supercharger to make it a little more fat. It's a plug-in from Native Instruments. play around with this as well. And I have a limiter to make sure the wh when I open the cutoff on the on the synth, the volume uh, volume increases a bit. So with the limiter I make sure that it doesn't get too uh, too loud. So now I have the melody right here. So it's time to uh, create a beat for it. Uh, then my first choice is to get a kick. And I use kick two to create my kicks. And it's a really cool plugin where you can just create a kick from scratch. Uh, here, I already, already made one. And you can easily see which, which pitch uh, the kick should be in. And you can change everything you want. And you can actually see the waveform uh, change as well. And 
And you also have uh, some options to choose a click to give it a middle, little more mid and high. Oh. So this is a pretty good starting point for me to uh, make the track, to keep the track going on. put some hi-hats with it. Oh, let me tell you what I do at the kick. It's nothing really special. The equalizer didn't do anything. Uh, I use a compressor of Fruity. There's a preset called the drums. And I've been using it since I started out with producing and it worked for me, so I'll just keep on doing that. So time to build it a little more further. Uh, we have the hi-hats right here. What I did with this is a little reverb and cut out the low frequencies because I don't need the low frequencies in a hi-hat. Next up, something I use to uh, create a little more uh, interesting sounds on the background is I call it gloves. <laughs> it's just a noise that, that adds up to the track as a whole. And then what I like to do is use some rolling hi -hats. And to give it a more human touch, uh, in FL Studio you have the swing button. And you can hear it change. How it works is you have like the, the grid, which the kick is on, and this makes sure it's not uh, all, uh, all the same, like, like a robot should do it, but more like uh, how humans actually should, should play it. And what I did with this hat, it actually is an open hi-hat. But I, make it, I made it shorter with the envelope. And the cool thing about this is that you can automate the decay and then you get this effect. So you can build up some tension if you, if you need to. And whenever I see this, uh, when I'm creating a track, I immediately create an automation clip of it so I can use it later on. And um, if you combine like the, the DK automation with a reverb, you can create a cool tension when you, um, when you build it up towards a drop or something, or a new, uh, new part of the track. Um, so now we have... It's a pretty good starting point for me, but I wanted to have something uh, on the background to fill it up really nice. And I found this ARP. This is how it goes. And I was uh, searching through some loops and I found a loop that sounded like this. I wouldn't use the, the actual loop, so I recreated it a little bit and this came out. And I think this adds up really nice uh, beneath the main melody. And what I did for the ARP is Oh, it isn't mono anymore. Do you hear the stereo sound? Okay. So I put a fruity panomatic on it to make it move around the, around the room. Again, a transit master to take a little bit of attack off. Supercharger as well. 
little reverb and take out the low frequencies. So next up is the bass. Uh, I recorded it with my Moog and it sounds like this. So I wanted the bass to be melodic as well because the track is melodic. But I don't need the mid frequencies of this bass. So I'll just put up an EQ and there it is. And together I should put a sidechain on the bass. I think this is it. So this is pretty, um, pretty much the track I already, already like. Um, but when I listen to other professional tracks I really like, I compared, uh, um, compared it to them, and I noticed that other tracks have like spacey uh, background sounds or percussions going on. So I was searching for that as well. And first I. Um, created like a background kind of sound which I can use through the whole track to make it more interesting and this is the sound I used so I just recorded it from from a synth and then I took out Took out the middle part. And stretched it. So now I have just the middle part and I can use this on the whole track to make it sound more interesting in the background. Uh, I already did it with this track. And I'll put, up, put on some effects. And now it's just a, like a, a tool to make your track sound more, uh, to give it some more atmosphere in the background. So let's see how it sounds right now. the difference well on these boxes with the background noise on and off on and off let's see little okay so that was one thing i would wanted to add in the background and another thing is this heads and percussion sound Thing I found in, in Contact, there's a uh, plugin uh, Contact, and which has a sample bank where you can find this kind of loops. And I just recorded them. This one as well. And they are already very stereo, and they are already interesting to uh, to listen to. 
So I decided to use them. And another one. You can't really hear them very well, but when, when you uh, get rid of all this uh, extra stuff, you'll notice it. So I'll put them back. And now we have this. So what I miss is a uh, kind of a snare. So let's bring that up. For this, I actually use kind of a rim shot snare um, because I don't want to use always like a snare. <laughs> and I've tried to search for different sounds that can do its use as a snare. And what I did as well is I put an open hi hat right here to create a little more variation. Mitch, in that construction, do you concentrate on eight bars or do you move it sometimes 16? Uh, depends on the melody. For this, I, I started with eight bars. I don't know where. Ah, <laughs> yeah. And um, when I have those eight bars ready, like now, it's time to, uh, to build the arrangement. And we can do it pretty quickly. So it kind of, it, it, it relies on where your melody is set. So it could be a 16 bar, it could be an eight bar. Yeah, depends, yeah. 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 Mostly, if, if my melody is eight bars, then it's enough. Yeah. If my melody is 16 bars, then I'll do 16 bars. So I'll put on the effects. Oh yeah, the snare has a transient monster as well, and you can hear the difference pretty good right here, I guess. So it's very punchy, and I don't want it to be that punchy to fit it better in the mix. And what I also did is lower the pitch. This is how it origi originally sounded, and I didn't like it very much, so. I put it down 300 cents. And now it fits better in the mix. So this part is for me, uh, could be the part uh, of the climax, like the, the, the climax of the track. So now it's time to uh, build it, build an arrangement around it. And you can do it pretty easily. Just imagine that you're on the dance floor and uh, ask yourself how would I want it to sound and try to make it that way. So I always do uh, a 32 bar intro, keep it clean. I don't want the snare, hi-hats can be here. on some automation. Pretty, uh, pretty quick way to uh, build your arrangement with. And normally would 
let the break begin right here, take off the kick. And what I often do is uh, put a low cut on the kick, so in the beginning you won't have any uh, low frequencies. <laughs> You can build it up really nice. Uh, and I want to share one trick I did with the ARP. It's from the synth F FM8, it's from Native Instruments. And what I try to do is, when I search presets and I really like uh, a certain sound, I'll just tweak them um, till I get what I want. And just try out some random stuff. Uh, like here you have the brightness knob. And you can use it as your advantage and uh, I chose to automate the brightness. So you can create a little more tension when you want to and you can uh, make it sound less loud if you, if you want to. So in the intro you notice it's more in the background than in the climax for example. So you can play with that as well and it makes for me, it makes it more interesting to, to listen to when it's all just the same. So let's see, we have a break at around 1 minute 30. And now I want to introduce the melody, but not yet as a whole. Um, so there's a little trick I used to do that, and I recorded something from the melody. So it's a little spacey uh, part of the melody. I, I stripped it, and I can show you how I did it. Uh, let me get the melody. Let's hope my computer works. Mostly it's uh, pretty uh, pretty hard program for my computer to open, but it's called Molecular. And what it basically does is it's, it's a plugin which uses a lot of other plugins to create some weird shit. So as you can hear, it's you would never uh, do this by yourself. So I just skipped through this uh, through these presets, and then I found this one, the dingbats. And I thought it was really nice. So I recorded it and I put it in the in the project. And we can use that to introduce the melody a bit. So I'm basically um, yeah, just lay out your whole arrangement how you would like it to be. And then you can just uh, experiment with all the automation and stuff. Uh, I already made this track right here, so I'll 
just skip through here. And I'll explain how I did the arrangement. And so here we have break with the bass. And because it's a melodic techno track, I wanted it to um, give it some life, not introducing elements too early. So this is the first climax. It's really minimal, but... And then after 16 bars, I added the snare. And I introduced a little bit of the melody. And then after 16 bars, we have like a in-between break. And I, I was noticing there was something missing, um, missing here, and that was like like a pad which makes it a little more atmospheric. And I made it right here. It's from the plugin FM8. Put a little vibrato on it. And I added also a glide for the end part. So it's, in, it's not in the face like uh, playing all the notes, but it's like uh, real smooth. And then I added just an EQ and a reverb. Quite an intense reverb. So it fits really good in the background and makes the track a little more interesting. And let's see, I introduced this one. Uh, already after the intro and it will be there the, all the track around and here the melody is still stripped and I'm building towards uh, to get the whole melody as a whole and then build towards like the real climax of the track Notice uh, all the all the automation I used. And the hi hat it opens up. And you heard the little background percussion thing doing his thing. If I put it this. Based on rhythm tension. Another method I use a lot, like with the build-up and then um, letting it drop very minimal. Uh, actually, I hate it when Trax does that, but it seems to work at the club uh, really good. Um, 
pay attention when you're in a, in a club and you hear just a kick drum, everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah. But when there's a lot of stuff going on, melodic and, and weird, weird stuff, then people are just dancing when they hear just a kick drum and a bass. It's like the best thing ever for them. So I did it for this track and then I chose to uh, bring in the melody later. And you can notice uh, how this roll head is doing its thing with automation. It's longer and then it becomes shorter again. And that's a good trick that you can use to make it sound more interesting. And here I used some snares to build it up and I used delay, like a ping pong uh, delay. And oh yeah, what I did as well beneath the melody is creating a spiral effect. <laughs> So basically it's like a little really weird uh, delay effect and it's very easy to make if you have the right plugin. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Taric is also a plugin by Native Instruments. Which? But it's really heavy. Oh. Huh? Oh. And there is a psych delay in there. create really weird delays with this. So I just try to try to play around with these kind of things to to make it a little more interesting, and I layer this under the main melody to just fill it up a bit. And uh, when I have like the track uh, and the arrangement ready, I'm always searching for some effects to make sure the transition sounds smooth. And what I did here is I recorded, uh, let me see. It's like a shaker sound. I actually recorded it myself uh, in the studio, so it's really authentic. And I just use this kind of things to uh, introduce a new part of the track. <laughs> nicely. Uh, and of course we have a reverse symbol right here. Didn't do anything with this. When I'm uh, busy working on a track, I just make sure um, 
when I hear if something needs to change, like volume wise or something, I just do it right away because you then then you don't have to do it uh, later. So I always try to make, uh, yeah, what I said earlier, to make the sound I want right away. And another thing I did with the open heads or the roll heads is, where is it? Where are they? I did an endless series on it. Have somebody heard of this plugin? There's like a, there's a technique, it's called, uh, how it's called? <laughs> I, I forgot, but uh, it's like, an en yeah, it's, it's like an endless kind of phaser. Oh, it's a shepherd tone, I remember. And you, you get the idea that it's constantly, constantly rising, but actually it's not. So I can demonstrate. So here it's rising and rising and rising and rising, and it constantly rises. So this can give an extra touch on your track as well. It's what I like to use on like the percussion sounds or the white noises. If you have any questions uh, throughout the session, let me know. And let's see, so we have the climax right here. I added in the break is some strings to give it a little more feel. And they're just playing chords which fit the melody, right? And for me it gives a little more depth to it. You can't hear them very well with some things I use, but I think it adds really nice, especially with the minimal uh, kind of climax. So now you hear the strings add up to the track. After 16 bars in the climax, I added just one more thing. Give it a little extra touch, and that is a right. Done, it's time to build the outro, and may, mostly it's not really interesting. Just making sure you uh, get rid of the elements really smooth so a DJ can play it easily. And then the track is finished. So this is a sh short way of um, creating the track from the beginning with the first eight bars and then just laying it out as an arrangement as a whole. And uh, remember that you can use the automations uh, as creative as you want. So if you see a knob uh, 
which could be interesting, just make an auto, create an automation clip and use it. And one thing I would like to explain is um, I had some lines here for automation for the for the Moog lead I used because you can hear that it's changing. But you can do it on uh, every kind of synth as well. And I will demonstrate a bit. So let's put down something. They use this uh, preset, by the way, for Leave the World Behind from Swiss House Mafia. I think you all know the track. So we have some brightness right here. We can link this to. Oh, where is it? To a knob on my MIDI keyboard. Oh, where is it? it for you. Okay, yeah. Now I can. Uh, change it with my MIDI keyboard. So let's say we want the brightness and we want the vibrato to be automated. And the volume we had already. The cool thing is you can be creative with this as much as you want. And in Fruit Loops, you can do it very easily. Where is the name? Hmm. Automation. And what we can do now is record notes in automation. things you touched. So the brightness, the volume, and the vibrato. And you can easily change them as well afterwards. So if you would like to have like a like the touch of a of a hardware synthesizer and you have like a, a MIDI keyboard or a controller or something, uh, this is a really good way to uh, make sounds more interesting, to make them never sound the same. And uh, yeah, to give it a more human touch, because you can also automate it the normal way. But this is more like drawing lines, and it's a little bit boring. So with like the hand touches, you can create a more natural feel. And the one thing I didn't explain is. Uh, how I use the side chain because it's a little different than some of you might uh, know. Computer is really slow. Okay. So we had the kick and the bass. Uh, where is it? Basically, what I do is I create an automation clip of the volume of the bass. Mm -hmm. 
and this way it makes sure it won't interfere with the kick. And I really like that I can see how much it is side chained. And you can change a couple of options right here and you'll see it right away. So I'm with the kick together. You notice they work really well together. And another trick you can use to make them work together is uh, to look where the frequencies of the kick are. So you can see right here, it's like uh, 50 hertz. And I cut, up, cut off the bass at around 70. So the bass won't uh, reach the 50 hertz, so they work perfectly well uh, with each other. Right, let me see if I have one more thing to share. Uh, right, what I always do is when I finish the track, I uh, make sure I save all the samples I used because um, I think when you use the samples, you think they are good. So when you're in a creative mood and you want to create another track, you can easily pick the samples you want to use for your next track. Um, so you can get uh, going real fast. You can always change them afterwards, but it can give you a good, uh, good starting point for a new track. And what I also do is when I think my track is finished, I just let it lay low for a while. And then after two weeks, I'll just go back into my studio and listen to it with fresh ears and then think about it if I have to change something. And I send it out to some people I, uh, I trust and I know that they're going to be giving feedback, uh, which I can use. So you can send your tracks to friends that said, oh, it's really nice, man, but you, you want to have feedback where you can actually uh, improve your track with. Um, yeah, so that's what I, uh, what I do when, when it's finished and uh, you, you really think it's finished, then you can send it out. Uh, to labels and hopefully get it released. So, are there any questions? What are you putting the on the master, uh, I'll show you a decibel meter. <laughs> no, I, 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 um, I make sure all the all the tracks are uh, low in volume, so my master will not be above. Uh, minus 6 dB. So it will not reach the six, min, six, minus 6 dB. So when you, uh, when you would like to master it, the mixer has a lot of headroom to, to play around with. So. Uh, do you recommend the side chaining using the automation on the bass uh, it, compared it, to using compression? No, it, it works both ways. It so works both. It's just uh, in the end, it, it, it matters how it sounds instead of how you use something. I use this from the beginning because I like to to see how much it is side chained, but you can do it with compression as well. Thank you. Any more questions? <laughs> uh, I see that you use barely no compression actually. I haven't seen many of the plugins. Not um, really, only only on the kick in this project. I sometimes uh, use compression on, on like a snare to give it a little more punch. But in this track I wanted to sound it smooth. It's not like a, a really hard techno track, it's more like melodic and it has to take take it with you. And it must be smooth so I just want my kick to be uh, to be strong, and the rest just flow around with. And would you consider adding it later if you do a mix down, or do you really mix it on the way and you just leave it from now? Uh, from now, I have it like mixed like this, and uh, I have to test it out. I, I just tested it once at a club, and uh, it it uh, sounded pretty good already. 
but maybe with some fresh airs, I, I'll think maybe I'll add some, something later on. So maybe I need to bring the finishing touch to this myself. Fabulous. Any more questions? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I see you were using, or you were dragging those orange, well, the automation information into the track. Yeah. Is this a feature within this DAW? Yeah, it's, just, uh, it, it's a feature you can use in FL Studio. I can show you quick, like if you have, uh, like for example, I want to sidechain the melody, make it automation clip. Here you can uh, change the volume of the melody I just created. And you can use the LFO tool as well to, to create a sidechain, for example. Or or use it to, uh, to lower the volume, turn it up, lower. You can do that with, it, with any uh, plugin there is. So you can also use it to um, get some more reverb or lower the reverb or get some more delay going on. And uh, can you copy them and use them for later projects? For uh, yes. One? Well, there's a option right here, right here where you can copy the whole, uh, whole spectrum of the automation clip you used. Uh, I don't know if you can really uh, save it for Thank later. Thank you. I don't know, but if you're doing really complex uh, automation clip stuff, uh, I know you can um, save the automation clip stuff I showed before with the handmade uh, automations. You can save that one as well. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Like, like, a, like a typical techno producer, we've run out of time. <laughs> yeah. So everybody, please make some noise for Mr. Klein, please. Thank you very much. If anybody has any questions, you can ask him directly in a minute. Thank you.